it's uh, being it being established uh, and uh, being really a catalyst of change for the people. It is clear that this is what our ancestors want, and what we're seeing here is uh, as based on uh, what, what's happening. It's a spiritual process. I can't say much more than that. Um, but I think what's also important uh, to note is that we've continuously said that there's all sorts of attempts uh, towards uh, this process of us getting back President Zuma in uh, you know, the union buildings as our president. The people want him there. The people want him to lead. Uh, people are tired of the status quo under the Cyril Ramaphosa-led government. Uh, we want lights. We want water. Uh, we want uh, people want homes. Uh, and what, what is happening here just resonates with uh, a truly, truly uh, spiritual process that's going through. And we, we will continue uh, in our journey to get, it, to get a two-third majority. So this order came a few moments ago. I'm sorry, I will come back to you yes. on that. Um, moments ago, you were obviously right here at the SABC studios waiting with us. Yes. Um, have you had a chance to speak to uh, former President Jacob Zuma um, about this particular matter? And of course, uh, just his reaction, what is the sentiment on the ground? No, unfortunately, you grabbed me before President Zuma could call me or him and I could have a discussion, but I'll certainly be calling him after this. Um, but as I was saying, um, President Zuma, we want President Zuma back. The people want President Zuma back uh, as the leader of this country. I mean, here's, here's what's uh, also interesting. There's been 15,000 candidates um, on that parliamentary list from various parties. President Zuma is the only one out of 15,000 people that are getting an objection. It's, it's, uh, you know, that, 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 that in and of itself is very telling. Um, but again, you know, this is... Uh, are very important uh, for the people of um, Konto Asizu, our members, the downtrodden citizens of this country that want to see change and that believe in Konto Asizu. We know what we're doing. Uh, it's imminent in terms of the outcomes. Um, and we'll continue to win. Uh, well, the objection is, the is an IEC process. I mean, it is afforded to anyone and, and, and it was made. Um, just going back to what we saw, you know, in court yesterday and some of the things that we heard, there was another submission, of course, that uh, the MK's uh, legal representative was, uh, was touching on. And that speaks to the utterances that were made by the commissioner of the IEC, Janet Love. Just talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, that issue of bias that was made, especially uh, given the fact that you are going to be working with the IEC very closely, you know, following these elections. Look, I mean, this, this is again, um, the IEC ought to be beyond reproach. Um, and specifically when it comes to leaders uh, who have important roles such as Janet Love. On the 24th of January, Janet Love made utterances off the back of a question regarding President Zuma. And uh, she made a pronouncement that uh, he would not be eligible to stand on the candidate list. Um, a totally irresponsible comment coming from a person who ought to be beyond reproach and uh, show, uh, actually not show any bias whatsoever. And then what makes it worse, you know, as opposed to her recusing herself from uh, overseeing the, 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 you know, the upholding the commission process and upholding that, that objection, she ought to have recused herself. She continues to participate in that. So if that's not bias, and if that doesn't bring about red flags in terms of how the IEC uh, what kind of process and how they conduct themselves, and yet they want to call themselves independent, that in of itself, and by virtue of this uh, judgment, is truly, is truly telling. Uh, and the IEC ought to really, really start uh, looking, doing proper introspection into themselves and their process and how they actually conduct themselves, if they want us to really, truly uh, take them as them being an independent institution. Will you be taking the IEC to task? Uh, is there any, um, you know, uh, fallouts or, or any uh, update in as far as that particular matter is concerned? I mean, uh, like I said, it, it is a crucial election. Um, a lot of people, of course, uh, listening to that argument in court yesterday in terms of the IEC's, um, you know, standpoint, particularly as it relates to that bias submission that was uh, then, you know, responded to by the IEC's legal representative. I think the best thing uh, that the IEC ought to be doing right now, um, if I was Janet Love, I couldn't recuse myself as a commissioner from a commission that I would have overseen uphold a judgment, the best thing for Janet Love to do right now is to resign. If I was her, I would resign. Because the longer she's in there, especially in a senior position, uh, and taking into consideration her background, having been an ANC MP, uh, is very concerning in of itself. So uh, I would say that the IEC leadership needs to now take that into consideration. Uh, she ought to be requested to resign. She needs to step down from her position, or at minimum, 
she must not be involved whatsoever in terms of these elections. President Zuma is now back on that list. Um, um, he is on the list. He is uh, your representative. Um, yesterday, he made some utterances outside of court um, following the closure, of course, of those um, arguments, saying that he has essentially unfinished business at the union building. Um, also saying that um, he will run for president again, should the people need him to. Just talk to us about, um, you know, why you think the MK party needs uh, President uh, Zuma uh, back on, um, you know, the seat and will the MK party be able to unseat, as you've said on numerous occasions, the ANC, for instance? Well, it's not the MK party, it's the people that want President Zuma. Remember, it's the people that went to President Zuma and requested him to come out of his retirement to lead uh, you know, the MK party uh, and to lead the people. Um, and we said, President Zuma, you know, we'll ensure that we bring and we rally a two-thirds majority to ensure that you get back into the office of presidency. Um, President Zuma is, is a leader that is trusted, that is known. Um, if you look at what has happened to date, when President Zuma was president, we had an SAA. When President Zuma was president, we had an ESCOM that gave us lights. When President Zuma was president, we had an, a, a transnet that had rail infrastructure that moved. We could export goods and commodities. Um, today, you know, what, we ha what we find ourselves is with an economy uh, that has a currency that has lost 48% of its currency value, yet the JSE share values, you know, in terms of dividend share payouts to white monopoly capital companies continues to grow off the back of poverty-stricken people. Now, what, that is very telling, and we cannot continue in that way. So we want stability, we want a vibrant economy, uh, we want jobs, we want free education that Sir Ramaphosa has now reversed with his friend, uh, Lady Zamande. And, and it's about time that we take charge and take control of our country from this ANC that has been bought. Very quickly, we have to wrap. Uh, you have another court case that is coming up, of course, that is a trademark-related case. What are your expectations on that? A win. We'll win. We'll continue to win, uh, as I've said, uh, even with that particular one. We're confident that uh, we'll come out there with a win. They cannot, this, let me put it this way, no one can stop the will of the people. No one can stop a project of ancestors and our natives, and this is exactly what it is.